Welcome back. In this video, we continue our study of chapter 4 and we move to section 4.3 about the weak star topology on the dual of a norm space. So I will split this section into two videos. In this video, I'm just going to cover the first part, uh, just about definitions and some basic properties of this weak star topology. So what we said about E is true for any normal space E. So in particular, if we apply what we said to the dual E star of a normal space E, we get also the weak topology on E star. So now we have on E star two interesting topologies. The norm topology that you know, because on E star there is an operator norm. And there is the weak topology, which is should be denoted by sigma of E star E double star. Okay. So just apply what we said in the previous section to E star. But now we have a third possibility now. We are going to define the weak star topology, which is weaker than these two. Okay. Now, according to what we said in the previous section, the weak topology is generated by just the map phi xi, if you like. Here I use just a different notation. So instead of f, we write xi now because uh, the, the map xi is in an element, is a function from E star to R. Okay, so just the same thing. Okay. Now, what now? So we know that there is an injection between e and e double star, given by this formula. So j of x, j x of f is just f of x, and we said that j need not be surjective. If it's surjective, we say that the space e is reflexive. What does this mean? This means that every psi must in e star in, in e double star must be of the form j x. Okay. This is the meaning of reflexivity. Okay, so in general, if we if we consider the collection of maps J X as X is in E, we get a sub collection of this collection. Okay, and the two collections coincide if and only if J is surjective. Okay, so the weak star topology is the topology generated by the collection of maps J X X and E, and now this collection is a subset of this collection. And the two collections coincide if and only if J is surjective, which means that E is reflexive. Okay. So what does this mean? It means that this the weak star topology is the smallest topology making all these maps continuous. Okay. These maps are already continuous in the norm topology and the weak topology as well. Okay. So we denote this topology by sigma E star E. Okay. So now we have three topology, norm topology, weak topology, and weak star topology. We cannot talk about the weak star topology on E unless E is itself in a dual. Okay. So let us establish some uh, fundamental properties of this weak star topology, similar to the weak topology that we formulated in the previous section. Okay, so first result, that I stated, and it's trivial actually. So the weak star topology is smaller than the weak topology, which is smaller than the norm topology. So we have a an increasing sequence or and equality holds if and only if E is reflexive. Okay, so this is what I was saying orally. So the, this collection Jx as x varies in E is a sub collection, it's contained in the collection of xi, where xi is an E double star. Okay, because Jx is an element of E double star. Okay, and the two collections coincide if and only if J is surjective, which means that E is reflexive. Okay, so that's it. So uh, by definition, the weak topology makes this this collection continuous. Therefore, it makes this collection continuous. But the weak star topology is the smallest topology making this small collection continuous. Therefore, yeah, this is just. Um, trivial actually, but maybe a little bit hard to understand. So, so the weak star topology is the smallest topology making 
this collection continues and therefore it's contained in the weak topology okay let's just think of it a little bit <clears throat> okay next point we have to prove two implications okay one implication is easy one implication is not easy and you shall not do it now okay so suppose that he is reflexive then j is surjective and these two ma these two collections coincide and therefore the smallest topology making continuous this one is the same as the smallest con uh, topology making continuous this one and therefore uh, the weak star topology is the same as the weak topology the converse is harder to do so i will not do it now because in order to prove it we need some deeper results that we shall uh, cover later okay okay Next result, as expected, the weak star topology is also Hausdorff, and this is not a, co a consequence of the Hahn-Banach theorem, just consequence of the de of definitions. How do I prove that the topology is Hausdorff? I take two arbitrary distinct points in the space. If they are distinct, what does they mean? As functions, two functions are distinct if well, if they don't have the same domain or range, or if they have the same domain and range, they must differ differ at, at least one point. Okay, so f1 different from f2, and f1 and f2 have the same domain of definition and the same target space. So saying that they are distinct means that they differ in at least one point. Okay, and therefore either f1 of x is less than f2 of x or vice versa but the situation is symmetric so we can assume that f1 is strictly less than f2 and therefore i can find a number now recall once again uh, x is an element in in e f1 is an element in e star but f1 of x is a real, is a real number so this is just inequality in r so i just pick an element alpha number alpha between these two and now I take O1 to be the set of F in E star such that F of X is less than alpha. X is fixed here in this discussion. Okay. So here F varies in E star. So this is what actually? This is just, I can write this as JX of F. So this is, means that JX of F is less than alpha or uh, F belongs to the inverse image under JX of the interval, the open interval minus infinity alpha. And by symmetry, I take O2 to be the set of F such that Fx or Jx of F is bigger than alpha, which means that F is in the inverse image under Jx of this interval alpha infinity. And now, by definition, Jx are continuous with respect to the weak topology. Therefore, the weak star topology. Therefore, O1 and O2 are belong to the weak star topology. They are open in the weak star topology. And therefore, also as well, open in the weak topology and the normal topology, but we don't need that. So, O1, of course, O1 contains X because, uh, uh, so it contains F1, excuse me, because F1 of X is less than alpha, and O2 contains F2 because F2 of X is bigger than alpha. So, we found a neighborhood uh, O1 of F1 and the neighborhood O2 of F2 in the weak star topology that are disjoint. Okay, they cannot meet. So same reasoning as when we proved that the weak topology is Hausdorff, but a little bit simpler because we didn't need the Hahn-Banach theorem. Okay, and as you expect, if the dimension of E is infinite, the weak star topology is not metrizable. Okay, we can prove this along the same line uh, of the proof that the weak topology is not metrizable in infinite dimensions. And actually we gave that as an examination problem some years ago. Okay, same same arguments actually. Okay, now we also by symmetry have uh, this proposition. So it tells me that given F0 in E star and finitely many points in E, not in E double star, in E, and the positive number epsilon, uh, this set is what is the set of f in E star such that f minus f0 of xi in absolute value is less than epsilon. So it's completely symmetric to the corresponding set of the previous section 
But here I interchange the rows of E and E star. Okay, so this is, if you like, a kind of weak weak star ball. Okay, but we have we have several centers and one radius. Okay, these sets are fundamental because they play a similar role uh, as balls in a metric space. Okay, so it's easier to deal with. So then V is a neighborhood of F0 in the weak star topology. And when we vary the centers x1, xk, and radius, we get a basis of neighborhoods of F0. So, and the proof is completely symmetric to the corresponding proof uh, of a similar result in the previous section. Okay, I don't remember. So yeah, this is proposition 4.4. Okay, so just as an exercise, try to adapt or copy-paste, adapt the proof of proposition 4.4 to this case. Okay. And now, uh, since in E star we have three topologies, three interesting topologies, we have three kinds of conversions. We have the strong conversions, the weak conversions, and the weak star conversions. So we will denote them by these symbols, arrow, F and arrow F, strong conversions, or conversions and the operator norm. Weak conversions, particular case of the previous section, and weak star conversions denoted by the semi-arrow star. Okay. And of course, since we have, uh, so weak star topology is contained in weak topology contained in the norm topology, therefore we have the reverse. So Fn converges strongly implies Fn converges weakly implies Fn converges weakly star. Okay, so strong conversions implies weak conversions implies weak star conversions. Okay, and now we have, just to be completely symmetric, so this is proposition 4.5. So if Fn, Fn converges weakly star to F, if and only if, Fn of X converges to F of X in R, because these are real numbers for every X in E, a weakly conversion sequence is bounded, and the norm of the limit is less than the limit of the norm of the sequence. And if Fn converges weakly star to F and Xn converges strongly to E, then Fn of Xn converges strongly to F of X. And this is a good exercise to test your understanding. Just adapt the proof of proposition 4.5 to this case. Okay, you see it's not difficult. Okay, so we can also formulate similar results. So, uh, saying that in words E star of the weak star topology is a topological vector space, meaning that the fundamental operations of addition and multiplication by scalars are continuous. So once again, uh, just try to adapt the proof of proposition 4.12 to this case. And the corollary, same corollary, if we equip the dual of a normal space E by the weak star topology, then any two open balls in E stars are homeomorphic, any two closed balls are homeomorphic, and any two spheres are homeomorphic in the weak star topology. Okay, so just same thing. Okay, so I think I will stop here before we move to the next result, which is Banach Alaw Globurbaki theorem. Uh, so thank you for your attention, and see you on the next video.